Hi guys, welcome back. Today I want to share the progress on this mini meadow that Francis and I planted in the front yard up by the street last year because I think that right now it's looking the best that it ever has since we first planted it. The whole thing is honestly just going so crazy with color right now. We've got bright reds and yellows and pinks and whites, blue, purple, like any color of the rainbow, you name it, the meadow's got it. So uh, let me give you some close-ups, show you what's growing in here. We seeded it from the Pacific Northwest wildflower mix from West Coast Seeds last spring, and then I did a second seeding this uh, end of February, so end of winter, while it was still really rainy, and this is how it turned out. So you can see that there's just an absolute ton of different species of flowers in this meadow, all the way from wildflower species to sunflowers to some stuff that popped up that I didn't even seed, so, you know, technically weeds, but I like it, so I'm leaving it. And it's just looking super bright and super cheery and beautiful. I just can't emphasize enough how much more life there is out here than when we first moved in. When this was all lawn, I didn't see bugs. Like, the pollinators just weren't here. And now that we have this little meadow strip, even this six foot deep strip, the amount of pollinator activity is absolutely amazing. I just like sitting out here and watching the bees and the hoverflies going from flower to flower. It's really entertaining. <laughs> and of course, it's really good for my fruit trees and berry bushes too, but it's also just really good for the wider ecosystem. I do kind of wonder if people get a kick out of me just like sitting cross-legged out on bark mulch watching bees on flowers, but you know, it makes me happy, so I'll keep doing it. So the way that I made this meadow is not exactly conventional. I think most people either get a sod cutter or a tiller and they take out the grass or they till up the grass into the soil uh, before they seed their wildflower mix but I didn't have the budget to rent any kind of heavy equipment and so uh, Francis came and helped me for a day, one of my friends, and I did about four more days after that of labor just with a sod cutter and a shovel flipping the sod upside down and then adding a layer of topsoil on top of that and just seeding directly in there. So. The downside of this is that I did actually spend quite a lot of time having to weed grass out of this meadow for a few weeks at the beginning, but now there's not a ton of grass left. It's mostly wildflowers. And the benefit is that I did end up with some seeds that were left in the sod, like the yarrow, um, that I was able to leave in the wildflower meadow and I didn't have to add in myself. So it was kind of an unexpected perk. So yeah, the downside is I ended up with some of the weeds that were in the grass, but the upside is I got free wildflowers. So the first flower I'd like to highlight is this amazing yarrow. I think this is actually the native yarrow in our area um, because it's got this super light pink to white kind of color. So that would be the Achillea millifolium. That's the native wildflower yarrow to southwestern BC. And I didn't seed this. It was already in this area in the lawn. Um, and I've just let it grow up into an actual flower versus whacking it back. And the bees and specifically the hoverflies really, really love this plant. So this yellow flower with the white tips is called Tidy Tips. That's its common name. I'll put the Latin name for everything as text over top, but I'm a big fan of this bright yellow flower. It adds so much sunniness to the whole meadow. And then beside it, I really love this. This is a type of Gilia. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but G-I-L-I-A. And it's got blue pollen, which is really, really cool because when the bees fly around on it, they, they have blue pollen all over their little legs. It's super cute. Uh, this red one down here is flax, and it's so vibrant that my camera's having a really hard time picking up the actual color of the flower, but it's super, super bright red. These are some of my favorites. These are California poppies. And these were actually here before I seeded the wildflower meadow too. So um, they were in the wildflower mix, but I also had them prior to seeding the mix. So that's kind of cool. I really love those. 
they're very reliable. And then I also have some larger poppies. I really love the color of these ones. They're like a red fading to white with a the yellow center, and they're really big, as you can see in comparison to my hand. And a few of them have already finished, so we have some seed pods here that will self-seed for next year. We have some aphids on this poppy, but the troops have arrived. We already have a ladybug here helping us out to get rid of the aphids. And we also have these bigger poppies in lots of different colors. So here's a, a pink and white one. And we've got some classic orangey red ones. And we even have this gorgeous dark red double that's just luscious. This fluffy blue flower is another type of gilia. I'll put the name of it on the screen also, but I love it because some of them are short, but then some of them are really, really tall and poke up above the meadow. And they're like these little pom-poms sticking up above the rest of the flowers. I just think that's really pretty. And of course, down in the bottom, we have some lupins in their first years. So they're still pretty small, but we know how big they're going to get, so don't underestimate these lupins. Next year they're going to be absolutely huge. Um, the wildflower packet came with yellow lupins, but I also seeded some, some of the native blue lupins. And finally, just yesterday, this white alpine phlox opened up. And it's white, but it has these little hints of pink around the edges, and I really love its foliage. It's like spiky, <laughs> almost, and it smells really, really good. We also had a flower called China Houses, which is finished now and is all going to seed. It was purple and white. At the end of last year, when my sunflowers were finishing. I actually just took the sunflower heads out here and sprinkled seeds everywhere, knowing that the birds would probably get most of them. But I have ended up with a few sunflower seedlings out here. This one is absolutely massive. See how big that one is? So that's going to be a nice big sunflower. And they're kind of sprinkled all through the meadow too. You can see another one over here. There's some more further up. But yeah. I just love how the display is constantly changing. There's one last flower here that's about to pop open and I'm not entirely sure what it is. So I'm gonna go look at the seed packet and see if I can ID what this flower is going to be. And earlier this year, we also had baby blue eyes. And then before that we had the daffodils, of course. And before that we had lots and lots of crocuses in the very early spring. So overall, I am super, super pleased with how this meadow turned out. Um, some things I'd like to change is I do want to get some bricks and put some edging up by the sidewalk just so it looks a little more like an intentional garden and a little bit less like I've just let my lawn grow over. Um, you know, after all, we are in the suburbs. You do kind of have to make some accommodations for that that aesthetic, and it'll look it'll look a little nicer having some brick edging anyway. Um, I also want to get some round pavers and put some stepping stones through the middle of the meadow so you can go straight from the sidewalk into the yard and not have to go all the way down to the driveway and around. Um, but other than that, I'm really, really happy with how it's turned out. If I were to do it again, I think I would just make the investment in renting a sod cut cutter or a tiller. I think it would be worth the money versus spending six days out here doing the backbreaking work of turning sod over with a shovel in the blazing hot sun. So that's something I would recommend. And I would also make sure that I did it at a time of year where it was raining. I say the biggest mistake I made making this meadow last year was that I seeded it a little bit too late. There wasn't enough rain in the forecast to actually germinate the seeds last year. So we ended up with this sort of mysterious patch of dirt up by the street all year that had people wondering what the heck I was doing with my front yard. So yeah, if I were to go back in time, I would really prioritize getting this meadow seeded and get it in in like February or March versus waiting for April or May like I did. So learn from my mistakes, put your meadow in in the rainy season. Don't wait until the summer. One kind of funny thing I did notice though is that I got much better germination 
in by the mulch part of the garden than I did out by the sidewalk. And that probably has a really logical explanation. It would be hotter and drier out by the sidewalk and much wetter in by the mulch. And so those seeds would stay much more consistently wet, which, you know, improves germination rate. So I've got some empty patches out by the sidewalk. You can see one here. And further along, you can see one here. And I've also noticed that the species change a little bit through the meadow in terms of what germinated where. So up by the sidewalk, we have a lot more of those super hot, drought-tolerant species like the yarrow versus as you move inwards, you get a lot more of those plants that like more water, like the poppies. And I just find that super, super interesting. But this pattern of lower germination of those wildflower seeds up by the sidewalk doesn't really worry me because in this center patch at least, this is where I'm putting the stepping stones through to the grass. Well, it won't be grass long term, but right now it's grass. And in time, I'm sure that the more drought tolerant, heat loving stuff like Yarrow will fill in these big gaps and it'll all work itself out. I'm hoping that over time it'll be less of a big mixture and it'll become more like drifts of certain flowers that self-seed themselves in the environments that are best suited to them. So my plan for this area going forward is this year I'm going to let all of these plants self-seed. A lot of them are annuals and there are some perennials coming up like the poppies and like the lupins that will get bigger every year and I'll let them self-seed too. Um, I do anticipate that every year we'll have more perennials and less annuals and that the meadow will change year after year and I'm I'm totally cool with that. That's part of the fun of doing something like a meadow versus a traditional garden. Um, but I am going to get another package of wildflower seeds and reseed it this fall before the winter so that I know that I'll get lots more flowers next spring. So I hope you enjoyed this little meadow update. I'm sorry I hadn't shared this sooner. I know that everybody's kind of been wondering like what happened to the mini meadow? Did it work out? And yes, it did work out. It looks absolutely beautiful and I'm super happy with how it turned out. My only regret is I wish I had made it bigger. <laughs> I hope you're all having a great spring. I hope your gardens are also looking super colorful, super glorious, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.